Hello Dan here, 26th of July, welcome to Essex UK. So, got loads to harvest today, so we're going to be going around the garden here and we're going to be endeavouring to get plenty of fruit and vegetables into this bowl here, which is nice. So, we've got tomatoes, we're probably going to be moving on to some climbing French beans, there really is all sorts. But uh, if you like my videos, please feel free to like, share and subscribe. And let me know also in the comments section what you are harvesting from your garden, your allotment or wherever. Had some quite uh, nice comments on my last video, you know, people saying what they've been harvesting, which is good. So it sounds like a lot of you out there are doing really well. And that is, of course, grand. Anyway, without uh, further ado, let's get on with this video and uh, see what we can come up with. Okay, so 26th of July, and here I stand in front of my tomato plants. So some of you may have seen the video the other day where I cut off some of the foliage in order to get these tomatoes to ripen quicker. It's been successful. Some people don't like the idea of cutting off that much foliage, which of course is fine. You can get information from a variety of sources, draw from your own experiences, etc., and uh, make your own decision, which can be in many ways a good philosophy to have in life in general anyway. So let's have some close-ups. You could see what the crop looks like now, and we'll also do some picking. So we'll approach the plants here, and um, look at these, look, absolutely wonderful crops there really good and you can see i've got a nice fruit set all the way up here of course these are to come at a later date and there's plenty on there and if you look up here plenty up there they'll be ripening much later in the season this one here nice fruit set here i think you're getting the idea plenty of crop to come and here of course once again Plenty of lovely Gardener's Delight Tommy's there. So we look down here and this is the House Dwarf Tomato. And you can see once again, that's got a beautiful crop on there as well. Don't worry about this, this fell over ages ago, but uh, it's still got roots in the ground and uh, it's cropping beautiful. So there we are. I'm gonna just uh, nip out some more of these side shoots which have grown. I really don't want them. It's good to keep an eye on your plants as you go. Put them in there, because this is the picking bowl. So, let's have some Tommies here. These are lovely, these are. Let's try one. Yep, that classic Gardener's Delight taste. I quite often like to pick mine when they're like that. little bit on the sharpish side. So I took the decision earlier in the year to not feed any of my plants because I'm working more on building the soil quality. So that's what I'm aiming for. So had I given these a little bit of feed, maybe they would have set better crops. Maybe they wouldn't have. But all in all, I've actually been very happy with how uh, these have turned out. I'll keep working on these, keep picking them. There we are. The plant can then put more of its energy into producing and ripening the other tomatoes then. And let's have plenty of these. House Dwarf Tomato. Low maintenance tomato, bred for growing in pots. And uh, once again, a beautiful variety. So this one down here, this is a Grishovka. Really nice sort of tomato, interesting shape. Been very impressed with this variety of tomato. It's a tall bush tomato. So lovely, there you go. Look at them nice tomatoes there. Probably going to end up eating most of these tonight. Might take uh, some of them to work with me tomorrow in my lunchbox. But uh, make sure you uh, water your tomato plants every day if you can. Because if you water them all in one go, let's say you don't water them for a few days and you suddenly give them water, the plant can then take up a lot of water all in one go and then that can actually split some of the fruit. And you do not want that to happen and it can be incredibly annoying if and when it does. Anyway, now I'm actually in the mood today or this evening for some carrots as well. And this is a variety of carrot I've got growing in this container down here and it's called the giant red carrot. So that's absolutely wonderful. Giant red carrot planted on the 13th of March. So what's that? Three, oh, blimey, over four months since I planted these. So let's 
get these out here and uh, we shall uh, see what little harvest of carrots we've got here. So here we are on the 26th of March. Let's have a look and see what we've got here. Oh, nice. Yeah. I'm probably going to end up leaving some of these in. Let them get a bit bigger. Nice carrot, isn't it? Uh -huh, this looks like a big size one. Let's see what we've got. Yeah, that is a nice carrot, isn't it? So I've got four carrots here. Now this variety actually has potential to get very big, hence the name Giant Red Carrot. When I grow these next year, I might uh, endeavour to actually grow some giant carrots using this variety, but um, I'm very happy actually, to be honest, with these carrots here, particularly that one. So let's, uh, let me see them, look. I mean, they're a nice carrot, aren't they? There's uh, nothing wrong with them. So I've got two varieties of climbing French beans. So this here is the Cherokee Trail of Tears. Now you might want to do a little bit of reading up on this variety. Um, in my opinion, it's very important that uh, we keep varieties such as this going. So there's a little bit of reading there for you if you would like to do so. This variety here is called Neckar Gold. Now, I don't know the origin of this. Um, isn't there a river Neckar in Germany? Please uh, let me know. My geography is not that good, but uh, a lovely variety. And the Cherokee Trail of Tears, many of them are ready now. This is an earlier producing variety than the Neckar Gold, which could be described as a mid to late season producing variety. But either way, they're both lovely, and I grew these both last year. So this variety here, Cherokee Trail of Tears, these plants here, I grew them from home safe seed. I grew this last year, saved some of the seeds, and this resulting plant and the crop is from my own home safe seed. So that can be a nice thing to get into as well. But uh, anyway, let's uh, do a bit of harvesting here. I've already picked some here and uh, let's get some more. So when you're doing your harvesting, really look through the plant, you know, really be vigilant, have a good look. You don't want to leave any on there that are ready because you don't want them to go all stringy and tough. And uh, just have a look. This variety has got beautiful purple pink flowers which I absolutely love so it's a really nice ornamental variety as well lovely pink purple flowers highly ornamental in my opinion so black fly aphids etc I've got a few of them on my plant here you may have some as well unfortunately runner beans as well etc and what I like to do you squirt them off using this squirter here you could also use a hose of course be careful you don't damage the plant the crop or the flowers. But so what I do is I just squirt them off like this. Ideally, you need to deal with the ants, which quite often farm them. But um, this is a, just sort of a quick fix really, but uh, don't want to digress too much today. Let's uh, get on with the harvest. Now that's the uh, harvest there of the Cherokee Trail of Tears. Plenty more to come, which is of course wonderful. So Neckar Gold. Now these are just starting to come, but I'll pick you know, a couple of them. They go a lovely yellow colour. And once again, the bean here is very ornamental. And they can get quite long actually as well, quite long for a climbing French bean, but yet they still retain their tenderness. A very interesting taste these have. Um, I found them quite sort of filling when I was eating these last year. So these are one that I've sort of added to my list as sort of one to grow every year really. In fact, these ones here, I've actually made, oh blimey, goodness gracious, look at them, a good size. So uh, I'll just pick these and you can have a look in uno momento. So here you go, look at them. There you go, that's the longest one. So these are actually uh, quite a nice climbing French bean to grow as well. So peaches, now you can see here, I had a massive fruit set here. Now I really should have thinned these here and I would have got some bigger peaches, but I just left them to do their thing, which is fine. And uh, you can see just what a massive crop that I've got here. And some of them are, oh yes, certainly ready. So let's pick some of them and uh, we'll see just what they are like, this variety. I mean, goodness gracious, look how many there are. There's probably about 50 or 60 fruits on there, maybe even more. 
So this is variety Peregrine, okay? Lovely little peach there, <laughs> cute. Oh, goodness gracious. That is sweet. Really lovely taste. White flesh variety. Last year, I had this growing in a pot, the other side of the polytunnel. I put it in the ground, and uh, last year it produced, it was still in the pot at the time, it produced less fruit, but they were bigger. Many of you have seen my Dixie red peach, my other peach tree, and uh, the peaches were much bigger. The tree, of course, is much more mature than this one. But this is a really delicious, oh yeah, another one there, look, really delicious variety. So looking over here, this is nectarine variety, Lord Napier, and uh, they're not quite there yet, but I found one that could be just borderline ready. So uh, I might be, oh, here we are. Now this one here is starting to soften up now. So we'll pick this and we'll see what it's like. So you can see here the beautiful crop that uh, this plant has set. Really lovely nectarines on there. Same as the peach I showed you a moment ago, the peregrine. Was in a pot, and then I've planted it in the ground here. But uh, let's pick this nectarine here. Right, let's... Uh, you'll be very careful you don't damage the fruit or the tree. That is a cute little nectarine, isn't it? I probably haven't given these trees as much water as I should have and also had i wanted bigger fruits i would have thinned them but uh, i've left the trees to do their own thing and uh, i'm happy with these beautiful both these varieties being white fleshed these varieties they have a, a sweetness with a sort of tanginess attached to it and they're just delicious so i'm standing here underneath my jubilee plum tree i bought this tree about uh, five six years ago something like that lovely plum tree the plums make a lovely size about the size of a chicken's egg so if I remember correctly this is a Swedish variety and one of its parents is Victoria which is a very well-known plum so absolutely wonderful now a lot of wasps around this year and also ants are going for these as well but uh, yep sadly got that one I'm just gonna have a look here and try and uh, pick you one so that we can have a little taste test here but uh, let's have some close-ups of some of the fruit and don't trip over as you're making YouTube videos. So there you go, you can see just the sheer beauty of the fruit there. Really gorgeous, you see, uh, yep, got to keep an eye out, the uh, ants, etc. had a go at that one, but beautiful colour fruit. I mean, look at the colour of that. So, got one up here. Let's pick it. So they really are, you know, beautiful. Yeah. The taste is beautiful. Really nice. So I'm going to have a look at this tree after I finish making this video. I really need to pick the ones here that are ready. I might even pick some of the ones that aren't quite there yet and ripen them on a windowsill because I don't want to risk losing these to wasps and ants. But yeah, good harvest this year of plums here. So anyway, that's my uh, little plum harvest here. Got some lovely uh, plums there. So you see this one here, look, that's actually fully ripened this. In fact, it's probably a little bit on the overripe side, but uh, it's ripened on the tree, which is ideal, of course and nothing's had a go at it, ants, wasps, etc. That, that's incredibly sweet. Lovely variety, Jubilee Plum. So anyway, there we are. That's the harvest here. So what do we got? We got climbing French beans, plums, peaches, nectarines, or a nectarine so far, and some tomatoes, positively lovely. So there's loads to come on this channel, loads more harvesting, how to grow certain things, videos, etc, etc. So I'm just going to take the camera around and just give you a little bit of a taster as to some of the things that hopefully are coming up.
So I'm expecting uh, quite a grape harvest this year. Apples, more apples, sunflowers, red sweet corn. So growing away in this tunnel, I've got all sorts. Uh, got more grapes there. I've got some watermelons growing down here, hopefully. Aubergines, peppers, chilies, either or. Bit of melons over there. Got some sweet potatoes, hopefully, growing down there. We shall see. And of course, the allotment as well. And some more things growing here in the garden. But uh, there we are. So, as always, thanks very much for your time. Comments, questions, whatever's, please feel free to post down below. Once again, if you've managed to bear watching this video till the end, thank you very much. And uh, please feel free to like, share and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video and uh, hope your gardening is going well.